Many people are wondering why is it the Tesla using the new M3P battery from CATL yet? Well, the short answer is this. CATL are not yet making enough. They're only doing minor numbers, nowhere near enough to put these batteries in even a fraction of the Tesla Model 3s that Tesla have already sold. It won't go into mass production until around the second month of next year. But there is an electric car that you can buy today and receive delivery in early December that gives us a sneak peek. It shows us the kind of range we can expect from future Teslas with this technology. The industry has been talking about M3P batteries, which are a hybrid battery technology, a combination of ternary battery and LFP. As being the future of the industry, I personally think that it is. I believe that Tesla will use these batteries in the new Model Y. And it will also likely use the version 2.0 LFP batteries from CATL, which are capable of incredibly fast charging. However, we we keep hearing about this battery technology, but it, it's not appearing. I mean, CATL have been talking about it. We're hearing it'll be out in EVs by the end of this year. But finally, there is actually an electric car which is about to go on sale with this new battery technology from CATL, and it's not a Tesla EV. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. If you haven't been paying attention to this story here, M3P batteries are considered to be the best of both worlds. LFP does have some drawbacks. The energy density is lower than ternary batteries. Usually it's significantly lower, and usually those batteries are heavier. But by combining manganese in the battery and by using some little techniques that are used in ternary batteries, that aren't usually seen in LFP. CATL say they've been able to increase the energy density and also mean you don't have the drawbacks of ternary batteries. So what are the drawbacks? Well, the drawbacks are, you know, you're only meant to charge to 80%. LFP, you can charge to 100%. No worries, doesn't doesn't affect the battery. Tesla say, do it, charge 100%. You should do it, do it once a week, that's good. So that's one of the drawbacks with ternary batteries. They may have higher energy density, but you're not meant to charge them to 100%. Other drawbacks are you get less cycles. So you're gonna get less life out of your battery pack with simply having a ternary battery. And what is a ternary battery? Well, 4680 cells are technically a ternary battery, uh, 2170s, so are the battery cells, pouch cells, that are cylindrical cells. You know, most batteries used that are not lithium ion phosphate are considered technically ternary batteries. It's really a wide umbrella. It doesn't really accurately explain the technology, but the point is here that an M3P battery combines the best of both worlds, the energy density of a lithium ternary battery and the benefits like longevity and also being better in fires and lasting longer even if you charge the battery to 100%. So M3P batteries are basically the perfect option. Plus they're cheaper to manufacture. CATL say that it costs no more money for them to manufacture an M3P battery versus an LFP. All they have to do is use their existing LFP battery lines and they can kind of slightly change the way that they make them on those same battery lines and it won't cost manufacturers more money to buy these new batteries from CATL than existing LFP. Big benefit. I mean, this means that you could get more range out of your EV, probably quite a bit more range Theoretically, 230 watts per kilogram is quite a high energy density. That's what CATL is saying these battery cells provide, meaning you probably get another 10 to 20% more range in your EV for no extra costs. Big changes are coming to the industry. This is one of them. Plus, remember, the lithium price has come down. That'll mean the battery packs next year should give you more range for a lot less money. So we've been hearing that Tesla will be using this battery technology and we thought that Tesla would maybe have this in, new, in the new Model 3 Highland, but the Model 3 Highland came to market a little bit too early. CATL said it wouldn't be ready for mass production until the end of this year. That does mean it's possible that at some point next year, Tesla will flip the switch and start using these M3P batteries, meaning their EVs could have 10 to 20% more range at some point, uh, some arbitrary time. Tesla might just turn around and say, hey, by the way, guys, all EVs built from today have more range. It's very possible. Huawei and Cherry 
developed an all-electric sedan called the Luxeed S7. It's going on sale on the 28th of November, and it will use these new battery packs. Now, Huawei, of course, is one of the biggest phone manufacturers in the world. I think they're the third biggest in the world, and they've started making electric cars. And Huawei have said, we want the best batteries. So they've essentially waited until this battery was available from CATL. What's the price? Well, this gives you an idea of the actual cost it's not that expensive 35,000 US dollars and this is this is kind of positioned to be a luxury car that's the base model price range is over 800 kilometers uh, if you if you get the super luxury version it's 40 it's about 48,000 US dollars but you're not really paying for any difference in the terms of the battery pack there the Luxseed S7 is sitting on an architecture, a new EV architecture made by Cherry. It's the same platform that supports the Exceed, Xlantis ES, and a range of other EVs that Cherry make. It has 800 volt fast charging, so approximately, we don't know exactly the numbers yet, but at least 350 kilowatt fast charging, and it has apparently an advanced self-driving system. How big is this EV? It's nearly five meters long. In fact, dimensions are almost identical to the Tesla Model S. It's a pretty big car, much bigger than a Tesla Model 3, and yet it's still getting more than 800 kilometers of range out of what appears to be a pretty small battery pack, right? This is a big car. And when you realize the size of the battery, what range you're getting from it, it's actually pretty amazing. Anyhow, first of all, what power is it running? Single motor on the rear axle with 215 kilowatts. That's the base model. That's about 280 horsepower. The all-wheel drive version has two motors and a total of 365 kilowatt or over around about 500 horsepower. Now, if you get the more expensive version with the CATL bigger battery pack, that's a 79.9, so an 80 kilowatt hour pack. That'll give you your 800 and around about 850 kilometers of range. That's the LTC. So real world range might be 800 kilometers from an 80 kilowatt hour pack. That shows you uh, for context, the BYD seal with its 80 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate pack is getting well less than 600 kilometers of range. So probably going to get about nearly 200 kilometers more range with this new battery pack. But of course, it's not just the battery pack. It's also the software electronics. And it, I mean, the range could be exaggerated. I don't know exactly, but still you can see that there's going to be more range. There's two different battery pack options here. You can get a standard LFP battery pack. That's CATL's version two battery. And that costs a bit less money because it's a smaller battery pack. And it's the, now, you know, it's still probably, you're still probably paying a little bit less at this point for the older technology or what's perceived to be the older technology. But if you get the M3P battery, that's when you're going to get the bigger pack, the 79.9 kilowatt pack, and you're going to get it over 800 kilometers of range. So this shows you that energy density is in fact increasing and costs of batteries are coming down. Very good chance we're going to see these batteries in either the Model Y or the Model 3 within the next 6 to 12 months. I'm very confident that it will happen. The only question is not really will it happen in my mind, it's a question of when will it happen. So what are your thoughts on this, guys? Is this something that you think will affect your purchasing decision? Because the truth is, if you buy a Tesla today or any car today, uh, in 12 months' time, it, it could be the perception that it's a little bit obsolete. I think technology is going to change so, so rapidly over the next five to 10 years. We're going to look back into 2023 or 2024 and think, and when EVs were, I mean, yeah, they were all right, but they were nothing compared to today. Because if you think about this, Hundreds of billions of dollars are being invested into EVs, into battery technology, into electric car motors, into efficiency improvements. All of that will have pay off enormous dividends. And we're going to be driving around in vehicles, like I've said now many times, with at least 600 miles of range that are affordable, even in pickup trucks. It's just, it's going to happen. It's really not, a, like I said, not a question of will it happen? It's a question of when. What are your thoughts though? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.